Hello, welcome back. So welcome back to the case house of discovery. Uh, this one will be a little different if you notice. Uh, you are watching YouTube right now. You can use your mouse to drag around this image and you can have a look all around. You are in uh, one of the room of HitLab right now. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm trying this 360 video style of uh, recording. So it's different than have a frame you fix on me, but now you got the freedom to all look around. Yep, so let's start. So a couple weeks ago, I went to visit a plane being uh, placed at the Christchurch airport. And this one is a little special. I boarded it and they call them the Sophia. So Sophia came to Christchurch uh, back in July and August. They have this open day event. And I got the chance to onboard a plane and also listen to a lecture coming from one of the principal scientists. So get an understanding what the plane, what the Sophia is doing and what the planes look like. And here comes this, this video, try to share it around to everyone else. So the first question you'll be wondering is like, what is Sophia? So why the plane has such a name? So Sophia actually, it's, uh, it's a short name. It stands for the Stratos Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. So S-O-F-I-A is the short of it. And it means a, it's actually a plane being converted to a infrared astronomy and it's a, for this kind of observation purpose in the use. And to be short, SOFIA is a Boeing 747SP plane carrying a very large telescope and fly that into the stratosphere carrying the telescope to do some observation tasks. So if you look at the image over here, you're gonna see like a plane, looks like a 747, which is different. But why this, this plane is so special compared to other 747, which has been like a dozen of them flying around the globe? Well, this is actually started as a Boeing 747SP, is for special performance. So it's built back in 1970s when the Boeing wanted to have a plane for the long haul like in flights and NASA bought it and then upgraded it and then modified to carrying a telescope. So it has an opening on the back side of the plane, if you have a look, and then they're carrying a 2.7 meter diameter telescope pointing up. So the scientists can just using that as an instrument to to using the flying telescope. And we're gonna talk more about what's his special with other telescopes on Earth. And that is being built in partnership with NASA and the German Aerospace Center, which is the DLR. So that's why their name is being printed on top of that. So changing the 747SP into a flying telescope, AKA the SOFIA, can be quite unique. First, when you have this opening on the back end of the fuselage of the plane, you are creating like a largest whistle over the globe. So it will need more aerodynamic adjustment on as engineering. And then you may be wondering like, if it is carrying a telescope, what's the difference of this plane comparing to any other 747? Now what's in there? Should be all these passenger seats? Not, looks not like so. So if you have a look at this, there's a flying plane lying over here. So on the half, uh, the half, the first half of the plane is actually like more like a personal quarters. We can do all kind of stuff. And the telescope is on the, the back side of it. So if you're in the plane, you will see there are telescope mounted on the plane. And also there are other instruments. If you look at this way, there's a picture showing of them. There are instruments like computers, uh, working stations and stuff. And in the first part, like there's a cockpit, the pilots, and then there are this, um, some seats and other communication racks around this way. And then this is the middle is all the scientists lives, uh, the states. So such as the mission control, the, the aeromaster, and the, uh, the telescope crew, the scientist crew, if you look down here, and there are tables around where scientists can do the discussion and all kind of the stuff. And to build such a plane, is, it's of course not cheap because it's very like, sensitive and um, this kind of powerful scientific instruments and costs more than $10 billion to build such a, such a flying telescope. And the, every time to fly it, it might cost like 1 million per night because it's always flying at night. So what's this 
flying telescope that SOFIA do. Uh, SOFIA is designed to observe the infrared part of the universe, so it's not the visible light, more like infrared. And what they do in, on their regular task is have a time hour long flight that goes up like all the way into the uh, upper level of the stratosphere and then do observations. So the outcome coming from this SOFIA flying telescope is such as like a black holes or new bound stars. And I've pulled up these two images so you can have a look and they are like the infrared image of our universe. And then people might be asking why would need a flying telescope? What's different from those mounted on the ground ones? Well, to do infrared Mm, astro astronomy, like it's different from the Hubble. You may you may familiar with that the Hubble is using visible light, so it launched into the Earth orbit and do this visible light observation, and the SOFIA is doing infrared in infrared light observation, and infrared light mm, it's not visible to human eye, but it's existing everywhere, and it's very easily to be blocked by the water vapor in the atmosphere we live in. So it means if you do an infrared observation using telescope on ground, you pretty much very hard to capture everything because most of them will be blocked by the water vapor. Uh, but if you fly all the way up to like 37,000 or 55,000 feet high, which that's is like a walking height altitude of Sofia, and then that's that's pretty much in above the the Tacho Sofia Tacho uh, Sofia. If you look at this atmosphere layer image being displayed over here, like we live in the bottom layer, the stratosphere, troposphere, and then if you go up to the stratosphere, you are pretty much above 99% of the water vapor in the air, pretty dry, and it's pretty cold. So the sky is clean, it's dark, and extremely cold, and there's no blockage of infrared incoming lights incoming, and it's the, the, wet, the temperature and the situation there is very good for a such like infrared observatory into the universe. Then you might think like we have a hover and we can launch a different one, different one like calling. The, the thing there's a new telescope coming up very soon, and why not launch another spaceship? And because if you have a plane that mounting a telescope, it means the plane can um, departure from the airport, do some observation, and then came back. So it will be easy to maintain. So once the plane landed, you can maintain the equipment, do some regular check, and fix anything problem, and you can upgrade the, the equipment like the camera like the instruments being attached to telescope and telescope itself. So unlike a space-based one, so which is launched and may have like a five-year lifespan and they just stay in the space, it will be very expensive if you send someone like a shuttle to, to, to uh, fix or upgrade it. The SOFIA lands after each flight and so everything can be serviced and ex exchanged and do the, all the maintenance necessary. So the SOFIA is regularly based in the Armstrong Research Center and in the California United States, but it will come to New Zealand, which is a special tour for for her every year, is because during this amount of time, like August and July, while in the northern north hemisphere of the Earth is in summer season and it will be almost very bright in the night, so they came down to the south hemisphere and landed in Christchurch. So Christchurch is like a gateway to the South Pole. And which is, has no and heavily habitated like continents or anything. The sky is very clean and it's winter season. And so they have a very good uh, window to fly up high into the south half of the Earth's sky and then go have, uh, have the observation towards the star's universe. And there are many things which is not visible from the north end because you're pointing that way of the Earth. But if you fly to the south, there will another half of the sky which you can have a chance to look around. Yeah, so that's pretty much about the SOFIA and what is the SOFIA flying telescope and why it is so special. And I will just let you follow me along to this uh, onboard video which I've taken when I get on the plane so you can have a, have a idea of what's inside that special 747SP and have a look at yourself.
So how do you think of it? And is it a short story about the Sophia, this uh, flying, pl flying telescope on the plane and my open day boarding experience? And it's also first time I'm trying this 360 video style of uh, vlogging and combining the 360 all seeing around and with the daily vlog style all together. And then you see these extra images, pictures and trying something new, it'll be always exciting. I hope you will like it, enjoy it and just see you next time.